How's it going guys? Welcome back. I know it's been a while since I made a video. Um, it seems kind of weird because I have no like headphones on so the audio might seem at least weird for me. But uh, just kind of coming back to it. Um, there's a huge Christmas update coming out. Um, <laughs> a lot of things. I mean I've already skimmed over it. Like these legs are going to be changed. Cannons are getting an update. Not, not like they should but they are getting one. But we're going to jump right into it. Should be still up. Hopefully. Oof. That's right. Not sure why it doesn't pop up in the news. You have to go to the webpage to see if you want to read it. Oh boy. Go ahead and refresh. There we go. So it's called Cross Out Rise of the Machines. Got a big old Christmas tree. It's pretty cool. See if there's any new parts in there that we don't see already. Most of that looks old. Nothing too crazy. I don't know why this Twitch crap shows up on my screen, but I don't care for it. I don't even watch Twitch. Alrighty, so it says, let's celebrate the new year in the wasteland. In this holiday update, you can expect a new brawl, rise of the machines with leaderboard and valuable rewards, a wide variety of parts, cosmetic items, and a festive workbench, a new relic generator, and numerous balance changes and improvements to the existing machines. Guys. <laughs> All right, all right. So we'll go ahead and... How long is this? 40 seconds? I'll keep my app shut. Is this the new game mode? Like helicopters with people? Oh, yo, that's got like... Oh, what? That's a levy for sure. That was really fast. All right. And it says attention event... Will last until January 14th in exclusive. It says Festive Brawl. It says Rise of the Machines is a team PvE brawl in, in which a team of survivors, four players, will work together to fend off waves of regular enemies and leaderboards to set the records for the number of waves completed and points scored. Both regular armored vehicles and armored aircraft can participate in this battle, which is pretty dope. Uh, the battle tasks or the battle takes place in a special version of the Ashen Ring map. At the beginning of the battle, players are granted a limited amount of time. It can be increased by destroying waves of enemies. So, okay, the more enemies you kill, the more time you get to live. Uh, each destruction of the player's vehicle results in loss of a certain amount of time. So if you die, you lose points. I wonder if that's from everybody or just we all get our own individual. Um, from time to time during the battle among enemies, that will be marked as a special icon. The destruction of such vehicles will provide an additional random bonus that temporarily strengthens the armored vehicles of your allies. Among the enemy ranks there will also be cars with blue visors. Destroying the blue visors frees the vehicle from the Ravager control, makes it friendly on your team, and brings you extra points. The results of the battle are recorded in the mode leaderboard and will be updated if you manage to beat the previous record. As a reward of Brawl, players will receive wires, electronics, and crackers, which I'm assuming is... What you need to craft anything in the workbench or the new festival. Uh, Lost and found explosives workbench. The workbench is only available during the snowstorm event. Players can use the workbench to produce various cosmetic items using common resources and new special year's resources. Crackers is a temporary resource, which, you know, at the end of the snowstorm event, the crackers will be removed, just like any. Um, kind of normal stuff in exchange for cosmetic items, parts, upgrades, everything. So looks right here. The best, so leaderboard. The best of the best will receive valuable rewards depending on their on their position in the leaderboards. First to third, legendary merchant's case containers with a tradable legendary part of your choice. That's pretty cool. Second through third, legendary merchant case. Uh, fourth through tenth is a tradable legendary merchant's case. So those will look the same. Uh, Eleventh through tenth is a non-tradable legendary. Um, An epic case with a tradable part. Places 100 through 500. Container of tradable epic case. That's that's pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. Special daily challenges. During the event, a special daily challenge will be available to you. To complete it, you need to take part in the New Year's... I just had to make sure I was recording. <sighs> it's a lot to read. Uh, take part in the New Year's Brawl Rise of the Machine 2 times. As a reward for completing the challenge, you will get a strategic reserve container. Um, New Year's promotional and structural parts. Only from December 14th to January 14th, any structural part in the badge exchange section can be obtained for only 150 engineer badges instead of 300. Pretty cool. It's time to expand the range of parts in the storage to assemble a car of your dreams. 
So here it is, guys. <laughs> the end of fucking cross out. Here comes triple typhoons and triple this and that. Double kaiju, you name it. Well, maybe not double kaiju, but crazy builds. This is going to be crazy. This is going to expand the universe of the game. And this is the first relic module, which is crazy. So this is... Produced on the Relic Engineer Workbench, the Secret Workshop. Greatest damage when detonated. Oh, yeah, obviously. Adds five energy points, has 367 dura. So it's, I wonder what size it is. It's pretty small looking. I mean, I don't know if these are any cents. I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight by three? Eight by three would be my guess. I don't know. I don't know, there's a grid there. That's pretty crazy. Legend or a relic. <laughs> this thing's gonna be worth like 80k, bro. <laughs> I will be there to craft it. I'm gonna make some coin off this. <laughs> Alrighty. So it says the New Year's uh, caravan event. So I believe we did this one last year. This is the one where you have to kill the caravan, and there's lots of people doing crazy exploits like grappling it and dragging it with boosters and it just blowing up in midair. There's lots of cool shit people are doing. Uh, it says the level of corresponding rewards are unlocked as you complete special challenges and earn event experience points. As an experience, points are required to unlock levels and receive rewards. Um, as part of this event, you will be receiving new challenges, one main and one additional challenge. Uh, new challenges appear every day. All uncompleted challenges are accumulated. The base event rewards are available to all players without exception. They include a container with a tradable epic part of your choice, 50 in-game coin, uh, cosmetic item, a new winter duck decor, which is pretty cool. Two containers with a customization kit of your choice, a number of stickers and paints. Um, decorations, fireworks, and decor. Contains with resources, special work workbench coupons, and engineer badges. All of the rewards marked with a lock icon on the blue background are only available for those are only available those who per have purchased the New Year's caravan caravan pack. Standard or deluxe versions, purchasing, purchasing the deluxe version immediately unlocks the following 10 levels in all, so it's a battle pass. Um, purchasing the pack gives you access to certain already produced parts, uh, recipes for production and upgraded parts on the additional workbench, uh, additional 550 in-game coin, New Year's tree decoration, storage expansion. Um, for each substantial level, starting from 47, you will receive an AC62 Therm autocannon as a reward. These autocannons can be used in the production of parts on a special workbench, um, as well as your used upgrades. Attention, the New Year's Caravan Pack will be available from December 14th, so uh, 14, so this is 6 GMT time, so this is 2 AM my time. On consoles, it will be, oh, 10 GM time, so this is, okay, so this is noon tomorrow for me. Weird. Ducks. You can now produce a unique duck called the Ninja Duck in the Engineer Workbench and Secret Workshop. The decor is produced from the Crew Duck, uh, Globe Duck, and Winter Duck. Uh, this is the new pack. I'm not sure what this is going to have in it. I doubt it's going to have the generator. Um, alrighty. Armored car is called Unstoppable. Epic Cabin is the savior. Weapon, three worlds. Hardware engine is Colossus. Gas Gen, RN Seal. Paint cans. So, really nothing special. I don't want to say not special, but like, not special. Oh, that includes a cool ass skin. So this is the deluxe edition. So this comes with armored car eraser, savior cab in the world, CK skin called recycle. That looks pretty cool looking at the pictures. Uh, new paint called scars. So this comes with the Colossus, radiator, RN seal, same thing. Trucker exhaust pipe and eye. Uh, character portrait, paint cans, a set of stickers. Maximum parts, 4,000 game can. Okay, okay, okay. So nothing crazy. Um, the Ravengers surrounding the young... Okay, that's lore. Attention, both packs will be available on January 14th. Um, all garages were decorated for the New Year's event. Environments, objects, and a number of maps have been approved, which will correct a number of cases where armored cars could get stuck on the surface when moving or colliding in invisible obstacles. So it looks like a handful. Fortress, Peaceful Atom, um, Knocklegrad grad uh, founders canyon power plant control 17 sandy golf shipyard uh, the terminal 45 map has been removed from, ro from rotation of the bedlam mode okay that's not bad um, so here we kind of jump into sorry this is going to be a long one guys it's at least going to be 15 20 minutes 
I'm trying to like read fast but not talk fast for those of you who are just kind of like, what did he say? But anyway, so this is gonna get into all the parts changes and modifications and updates. So tonnage recalculation mechanics. So previously in the game, only armored vehicles with legs could effectively use other types of movement parts as armor. As a source of additional tonnage or an additional perk that amplified the, the armored vehicle. We agree that this is a serious problem, especially in clan wars as well as battles and high power score levels. The solution will reduce the effectiveness of such use of additional movement parts that will not lead to severe limitations of the constructor. With this mechanic, the movement parts are grouped according to their height above the surface. So group one would be low clearance, stallion, and camber wheel. So structural pins above the surface, nobody uses any of that in high PS anyway. Um, stallions and cambers are included in this group due to their variable ground clearances. Uh, group two, all other vehicle or all other wheels and tracks are two to three structural pins above the surface. So I'm assuming a pin is like each little grid square here. So when you build your, if you ever turn that on when you're building, I'm assuming that's what that means. Uh, group three is mechanical legs and hovers. Uh, such simple grounding facilities the, or facilitates the work because the changes will affect a limited number of assemblies. So for example, a car on Bigfoot and Herms will not, will not suffer in any way, even though the wheels are some different than height. Now when mounting movement parts from different groups on the vehicle, only the ones belonging to the high group will cons will give a constant tonnage that is. Okay, this vehicle is equipped with movement parts of the third and second groups of the, at the same time. The only, wait, what? Then only those of the third group will provide a tonnage and if the movement parts of the second and first groups are mounted, then only the second one will provide it, etc. Okay, that's really dynamic for, I guess, those of you who run spider builds like myself or, you know, yeah, spider legs, because it sounds like what they're trying to do is, well, we already know what they're trying to do. They're trying to basically nerf using movement parts as armor, like hardened track with spider legs, which even if you take out the legs, it's still kind of, it makes it hard to turn it. Anyway, getting back to this. Um, Tonnage recalculation occurs with a two-second delay after the movement part of the lower groups contacts the surface or break away from the surface. Recalculation doesn't occur if all movement parts do not touch the ground. If the car is in flight after a jump or an upside down, the perks of such movement parts are enabled and displayed uh, synch synchronously. Probably slotted that. With the recalculation of the tonnage, if the movement parts from the third group are lost, the mounted movement parts from the second group are all their parameters and bonuses start working permanently. Okay. So this says, in this state, such mechanics do not affect the majority of armored cars. Due to points one and two, this should not harm inclined vehicles. Due to the, pro the prohibit the use of low movement parts as armor on vehicles with legs and hovers, but should reduce the effectiveness of such assemblies. Important. Due to the introduction of this mechanic, the forced disabling of hovers when mounting other vehicle parts has been removed. So we'll be able to use wheels on hovers again, it won't force it to the ground. Alrighty, interface. If the movement parts of different levels are mounted, then the lower movement parts are highlighted in orange in assembly mode. And that's kind of cool. If the movement in the movement characteristics, the word tonnage is highlighted in orange. If it's a different, okay. That makes sense. And then it says, when the hover, when you hover your cursor over it, the amount of tonnage they do not provide will be displayed on the movement parts. An additional line of explanation appears in the tool belt. So some of the movement parts are positioned too high relative to others. Their tonnage and unique features will only be active when they are in contact with the surface. So this doesn't give you any tonnage, but it doesn't say that it doesn't take away armor value, right? So not all of us are really using it for tonnage. The armor value is a big deal. Although this will require a lot of people to change their dynamics and their builds. Cause like, for instance, the Mastodon spider that has the Mastodons tucked in the center and then it's a big fucking square with ML 200s on the front. And then they have two hardened tracks tucked right underneath the Mastodon barrels. That's not gonna work anymore. Which works for me cause I don't do that. <laughs> Improvements of the anti-wedge mechanics. I don't really think that they need an improvement to be honest, but. Now when applying additional mass to form an enemy vehicle, the amount of movement parts detached from the ground is also taken into account. For example, if the car has 10 wheels, it hits another car, 
and four wheels go off the ground, the car will apply 40% of additional mass relative to what it would have applied on the current game server. Hovers and movement parts that don't give tonnage, mounted as armor, and do not touch the ground, don't participate in this calculation of the coefficient. This is only the movement parts that initially raise the vehicle above the surface that are taken into account. Accordingly, if after the contact, not a single movement part comes off the ground, then the mass won't be applied. This should eliminate the situations where contacting a higher enemy part resulted in outweighing and immobilization. In general, the calculation of the applied mass and the mechanics itself will become more fair. That might screw dog players. At least, you know, like Dananators, Firebug, Hover Catcher. Because as soon as, I mean, he usually goes for hovers, but if he does run into a ground build, it's going to kill him. Anyway, balance changes, guys. So here it is for the parts. Ugh, why these two? Why? Nobody uses them. Besides me, <laughs> I, I use them a lot. Uh, balance changes, P1 charge. So the mass was reduced from 576 to 445, which is pretty cool. And for those of you who do have fused, it'll obviously be less. Um, comment says the change will simpl simplify the assembly of the vehicles with charge and will increase the demand for this generators relative to Ampri. Uh, Goblin, damage reduced by 5%, rate of fire reduced by 19%. Now let's 30% of the damage through instead of 40%. Wow, that's like a direct slap to the face. Damage reduced by 10%. Now that's 30% of damage through instead of 40%. That's shitty. Wow. Cap can. The vehicle capture time has been reduced from 7 to 6 seconds. Uh, expanded ammo pack. Mass increased from 288 to 408. 408 is what it is when it's fused for mass. Right? Maybe. That's crazy. Miller, uh, mass increased from 495 to 565. Added the ammunition parameter, base value 300 points. Wow, so... <laughs> Millers are now basically a baby reaper. That's crazy. This says, comment, this minigun is highly effective in battles 8,000 to 10,000 PS. Vehicle with Millers consistently stand out on not only for their high durability, but also their amount of damage inflicted per battle. Increasing the mass of the minigun reduces the all overall durability of such vehicles and our limited ammunition will add an element of control and make the effectiveness of the minigun more dependent upon players' actions. I disagree with that. I mean, I, do, I agree that it is an outstanding weapon, but I disagree with the fact that its effectiveness based on the player. I mean, most players just download the Exhibition 899 build and go to town. Uh, Gerardia, so this is really shitty for a lot, a lot of spider players out there. Tonnage reduced from 1,600 to 1,400 kilograms. So if you don't have them fused, this is going to hurt you a lot. Um, comment, at the moment, this is the strongest movement part in the game. <laughs> you think? It allows you to assemble a very durable and very fairly fast maneuverable vehicles. At this point, we wouldn't want to limit the main features of these mechanical legs, speed and mobility in any way. So we decided to take changes to their tonnage and make the vehicles with them lighter and more vulnerable. The edit comes... Okay, this is not going to do anything in the fact that they'll just add more spider legs. Um, blight. Yikes. So perk damage bonus reduced from 40% to 35%. All of them dog players. The distance required to charge the perk is increased from 3 to 500 meters. That's pretty crazy. Uh, Astraeus, reload time increased from 4 to 5 seconds, damage reduced by 10%, perk damage bonus reduced from 60 to 50%. Um, for all you guys who love your impulses, Gunner, you're definitely one of them. Um, durability reduced from 192 to 171. Yeah. <laughs> no more 899 douches. Uh, projectile speed reduced by 10%, so basically they're removing the buff they gave it a few months ago. Uh, reduced accuracy, the effective, the effect of the vehicle speed on accuracy is increased by 30%. Increased and in spread the shot, or wait, what? Increased and in spread after the shot is increased by 70%. Reduced aiming speed by 25%. <laughs> wow. They like slapped my 899 build, and I know a few people who use that freaking impulse build. Because I use goblins and gremlins together, and they're just it's just a rush shotgun spider build where you just rush up on them and it just tears people apart but they, now that they're reducing the fire rate by 10 percent oh 20 percent basically 19 percent wow 
You might as well have made it 20. That's whack. Okay, my computer shut off, sorry. Um, back down to the rest of this not so great nerf buff. Cerberus Cabin. Added 30% explosive damage resistance to the front of the cabin. Resistance to ram damage also applies to the front of the cabin. So they're making it like... Okay. Um, Werewolf. Now after the cabin is destroyed, a drone with a Fafner shotgun remains for an unlimited time. What? <laughs> That'll be fun for you, Dan. Uh, Ghost. The cabin's perk now starts resetting after dealing damage. Not ramming damage, not after existing availability. Caucasus. Vertical angle or vertical aiming angles change from plus 40 to negative 20 to plus 20 to negative 10. Okay. Tsunami. Reload time reduced from 7 seconds to 6 seconds. That should be like 5.5 seconds. Damage buff by like 10%. And penetration value reduced by like 10%. Mammoth. Here they go again, messing with the mammoth. Reload time reduced from 6.6 .6 to 6. Um, comment, both Tsunami and Mammoth were excessively long reload times. No. You think? That's all cannons. Athena. The number of shells in each burst is reduced from 10. 7 to 10. <laughs> Here we go. Nerf. Damage and heating from each hit burst reduced by 30%. <laughs> all you guys who fuse that shit. Uh, now the spread increases more as the burst is fired, but it stops increasing when the weapon is rotating. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there was only called that a hundred times spark three damage frequency reduced by 25 percent damage increased by 46 percent negative effect to the spark perk reduced from 7.5 percent to four percent wow that's pretty bad negative effect stacks up to 15 times uh instead of eight apollo four durability increased from 363 to 427 sick uh, Reaper, added perk, after 10 hits on an enemy, fires an armor-piercing projectile. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Hello, Daddy Miller. Whew. That penetrates AP to three structure pins without losing damage. Each miss reduces the number of accumulated hits. The mechanics of firing without overheating have been preserved. Whew. That's going to be badass. All you guys out there, the Reapers. Chronos, charge consumption now stops, doesn't start if there is nothing to restore. Alright, i.e. all attached parts have full durability or there are none at all. Um, the Munim Cabin, now the cooldown time for, of drones that had the perk active at the time of destruction is reduced by 38%. Here's one I like to see, let's go. Reload time reduced from 7 to 6 seconds. Boy. And then they nerf the freaking perk on it. You might as well just make it shoot just AP and have no perk at all. The negative effect of the perk is now 30% instead of 40%. And its duration is 2.5 seconds instead of 3. Why nerf the perk? It's not like they were good to begin with. Comment. It says, He reasons for changing the reload time are similar to the Tsunami and Mammoth. A slight weakening of the negative effect of the cannon's perk is related to the fact that it is now applied more often. Yeah, but not 2.5 seconds more often. God, stop nerfing my tsunamis and my foons. Now, instead of... So, this is the Helicon. Now, instead of seconds of projectile flight, 0.75 meters traveled by projectile, 180 meters, are now used as an active perk. Comment. Okay, I'm not going to read that comment. Flash. Damage frequency reduced by 25%. Man, this is going to suck for dogs. Damage increased by 46%, which is pretty cool. Um, just doesn't hit as often. The negative effect of the perk reduced from 5% to 3.5%. The negative effect now stacks up to 17 times. Uh, Ripper, the weapon now deals 3.5 times more damage to bumpers and passive melee weapons. Wow. Fix the bug that caused discs to disappear when they hit water. I mean, you could have left that one. Uh, optimization of bonuses for part upgrade system. Made numerous changes to the power and handling upgrade categories to make the possible bonuses more useful. A number of bonuses were replaced with new ones and those were insufficiently effective when applied. The old bonuses are already upgraded parts were replaced automatically. Oh wow, wow, holy, this is a lot guys. Um, says the improvement in tonnage, you might all honestly, I, I'll read this all, but you're going to want to come read this because you're going to be looking at some of your builds and looking back and be like, 
Why? Why did they do that? Okay, so it says the improvement in tonnage of all movement parts increased to 10%. Mass limit upgrade from engines increased to 10%. Recharge boosters added effectiveness improvement 10%. Cabins, instead of damage from self-destruction, added a bonus to built-in radar and radio range. Plus 200 millimeters for the Hippogriff cabin, plus 15% to all radar parameters. That's cool. Instead of the explosion radius from self-destruction, added a new perk, cabin bonus speed plus three kilometers. Yeah, the explosion radius was the worst perk ever to get. Now we have a whole new dynamic. <clears throat> the reduction in self-destruction is now 30%. Upgrade to the cabin tonnage increased to 15%. In all weapons, unless otherwise noted, reload time upgraded to, upgraded increased to 10%. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. We'll come back to this. Isn't it 5%? Bro, there's no way. This is the longest it's ever taken to log in. We'll just, we'll just go to my tsunamis, for instance, or something that's cannon based that's fused. nine percent to ten percent or one percent what is that point twelve point zero twelve seconds wow i should complain because it is a buff but really cross out gaijin man rotation speed inc upgrade <laughs> increased to thirty percent ammunition upgraded to fifty percent hit impulse upgrade increased to fifty percent holy buckets this is a lot bad to the spread stability perk upgrade this includes the old increased spread below and aim speed and also affects the increase in speed from speed turning. This is going to change everything, dude. Holy crappers. Haha, -ha, crapper. Hope you enjoy this, bro. This is going to be crazy. This is going to make Clan Wars crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. This is going to change everything. Um, the logic for time to overheat. Oh, my. So this is for machine guns. So, replace spread increase with spread stability. Replace aim speed with scatter. Um, piercer, fidget, and imp. Replace aim speed with spread stability. Equalizer and arbiter. Replace aim speed with barrel spool up time. That's not bad. Um, the damage upgrade also affects blast damage as well. Wait, what? The damage upgrade also affects blast damage. So if I get 10% to damage or 5% to damage, I get 5% to explosion radius. What? Replace spread increase with projectile speed, 15%. Uh, reduced recoil with barrel spool up time for reapers. Hell yes. Um, replace barrel spool up time moved to handling category with penetration ability. For reapers? Penetration ability? That's going to make those things a monster. I'm going to go buy like 20 of them if they're still cheap. Replace ammo with projectile speed. Replace recoil with barrel spool up time. Players who had an upgrade for barrel spool up time power category will receive a replacement increased damage power category and barrel spool up time handling category. Um, repair therm. Holy crappers. Oh my god. What is this one? So this is little boy, hulk, elephant, mastron, fat man, mammoth. Replace spread with stability. What does stability mean? It handles the vehicle better? Sorry, I'm just kind of like reading all this. I didn't like pre-read any of this stuff. Median, Helicon, Waltz, Heather, Nest, Toadfish, Ensign. Holy crap. Yeah, guys, I definitely recommend you reading this or we'll be here for an, an hour reading all of this. They changed what perks are in everything. Of course, not for, you know, tsunamis and typhoons, but. Mandrake. The damage upgrade now also affects the damage of the fire puddles as well. There you go, Gunner. Replace spread with spread stability. Replaced rotation speed with projectile flight speed. Replace spread with fire puddle lifetime. Incinerator. Now the upgrade increases not only the damage of the puddle, but also the damage from the projectile explosion. Replace spread with fire puddle lifetime. Toadfish, impulse from hit increased to 30%. Replace ammunition with rate of fire by 
<laughs> wow. Toadfish are going to be awesome. Impulse from hit increased. Damn. Helicon Waltz. There's really nothing in here for boons. Oh. Oh, right here. Judge, Prosecutor, Executioner, Tsunami, Typhoon, Avalanche. Replace Blast Radius with Penetrate. No! Keep the Blast Radius! Penetration, it's not like... Typhoon's already over-penetrated everything, and so do Tsunamis. They, incre they replaced Recoil with Spread? Dude, they're Precision Cannons! Why the hell would you do that? That's a nerf if I say so myself. Now the freaking Avalanche isn't going to have that... Ugh. Man, I will say a lot of this is cool, but not. This is going to heavily shite on the game. I feel like a lot of unhappy campers are going to come out of this update. Okay, so this has improved vehicle position synchronization. Oh my god, we're at 30 minutes. Probably a lot of players have encountered a situation where as if you drive past the corner of a building, your car stops abruptly and can't drive any further until you move backwards. <laughs> yes. This is caused by desynchronization of the player's position on the client server. To the player, it seems as if the car is held up by air, while for other players, it crashed into the wall. The greater the movement speed and ping, the higher the probability of getting into such position. Yes, we have made changes that should speed up the synchronization of the position and minimize such problems. Um, improvement of collision models with other parts, Sinus, Assembler, TS1 Horizon, Neutrino, Gravistar, Emily, okay, interface. Bunch of stuff with interface, sound, miscellaneous, and bug fixes. So if you guys want to read the bug fixes and all that stuff, I'm going to cut it here because we're at 32 minutes. Most of you probably won't even watch that whole thing. But that's okay. Just click on it and, and like my video and leave a comment because I like talking to people. But there you guys have it. This is the new update, Relic Generator. That's going to be whack. Definitely a nerf to cannons once again with the dynamic changes, I think. I mean... The one second reload time is nice, but I don't think it's, it, I don't know. Explosion radius is a big deal with cannons because they're cannons. That's what they do. They, I, I mean, now what is it going to be like? You're going to shoot the avalanche and it's going to be like shooting a tsunami at like lobbing speed. I just don't know. I guess I'm, I'm curious to see the update's going to drop tomorrow. So I will see you guys all in the next video and I'll make another video when the update does come out because this puppy's going to be in there and, uh, we're all going to want to know what it takes to craft it. At least I am. I'll see you guys in the next one.